Johnny! For today's sponsor we have GVG Mall, where you can acquire your Windows 10 Home serial key for only $16 and using my SKEG discount code will get you 20% off, making it only $11. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and after getting it, you simply need to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, this is Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So today's video is another GPU comparison, this time the RX 6600 XT versus the 6700 XT versus the 6800. You have the 6800 XT, you have the 6900 XT, but these are the three, the, um, the three first grades, okay? 6600 XT, we have no non-XT 6600, 6700 XT, we also just have the XT version, we don't have the non-XT, and the 6800, which is actually the, the only car that has a non-XT version, and it is the 6800, okay? The tests, as usual, are 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. Nothing changing there. We have stock OC and OC plus SAM, plus SAM results, so smart access memory. If you don't know what it is, watch this video. And basically, that's it. Let's not extend ourselves much more, and let's go to the benchmarks. Like, subscribe, and share the video and benchmarks. I'm coming for the throne. I'm coming for the throne. Today's first game is Ghost Recon Breakpoint using Vulkan API and very high settings. Here we can see that all cards benefit from using Smart Access Memory. We can also see that both the RX 6600 XT and 6700 XT are kind of close in terms of performance at 1080p. And it is only at 1440p and 4K that the differences get bigger. Reaching the point where the minimums with the 6700 XT are higher than the averages with the 6600 XT. This at 4K. The 6800 is the clear winner overall and shows its superiority across all resolutions. Oh, hidden behind that poster that leads to the real world. We all feel safe in that room. But sometimes... Sometimes something crawls out from behind the poster. And the ones that see it happen freak out and try to forget what they saw. Now with Remedy's Control, an exceptional game in several aspects. At 1080p we have the same scenario where the 6600 XT and 6700 XT performances are close to each other, with the RX 6800 completely demolishing the 6700 XT with almost 50 average FPS more in a game as heavy as Control. At 1440p, the trend continues, with the 6700 XT now having a decent advantage over the 6600 XT, and at 4K, the only card being able to push really close to 60 average FPS is the RX 6800. Overall, pretty nice results for all cards.
now with Assassin's Creed Valhalla using the X12 and very high settings. This is another game that takes a really good advantage by using smart access memory, but as you can see, not in all cards. Although the gains are there, the performance boost given to the 6600 XT isn't even close to what we get with the 6700 XT and 6800. I assume that is due to both the limited bandwidth and the low amount of infinity cache on the 6600 XT. Who knows? At higher resolutions, all cards perform decently well, with numbers as high as 108 average FPS at 1440p and 64 average FPS at 4K. This time with Rainbow Six Siege, also using the Vulkan API, Ultra Settings and 100% Render Scale. Well, we all know this game engine is quite old, but the game itself was always optimized and has been updated year after year, which makes it even better. As for the 1080p and 1440p results, they are exceptionally good and all the cards can deliver at least 200 average FPS even at 1440p. Meaning that people focusing mostly on this game will be able to take advantage of their high refresh rate monitors. At 4K, the only card being able to push over 144 FPS is the RX 6800, but even the 6700 XT can push 120 and even the little boy 6600 XT can push over 90, which is actually pretty great. Getting close to the finish line, we have Red Dead Redemption 2 using Vulkan API and high settings. Like I always say, this game is an absolute masterpiece. Just give it a try and after the first hour, you'll get hooked. As for the results, these ones are retrieved from the inbuilt benchmark that can be misleading in terms of minimums, so let's ignore them for now. In terms of averages, we can see a noticeable difference in between the RX 6600 XT and the RX 6700 XT unlike in some previous games, maybe due to how heavy this game is. Both at 1080p and 1440p, the RX 6800 is noticeably faster than the RX 6700 XT, getting more average FPS at stock than the 6700 XT with OC and SAM. That's crazy. At 4K the difference just gets bigger. But interestingly enough, even the 6700 XT can achieve close to 60 average FPS at 4K, with the 6800 pushing over 72. Very nice results. Oh, father will kill me if he finds out I went up with you. Twice if he learns we've been to a Hanta off limit zone. Now with another very good game. I myself don't like shooters, but I have to give credits to Metro Exodus, with an awesome story with a very good gameplay. Results wise, we have a pretty decent scaling as it should always be. At 1080p, all cards can push over 100 average FPS in this specific mission, and at 1440p, all of them can push over 75, which is not bad at all. As the resolution goes up, so does the gap in between GPUs, being the 6800 the only GPU pushing over 60 average FPS at 4K. Still, both the 6600 XT and the 6700 XT are pretty close to those numbers, and with a bit of tweaking, they, they would be attainable, I think. Which is really nice to know. Overall, great results for a great game. Now with today's last game, Forza Horizon 4 using max settings and 2x MSAA. 
This game is really well optimized and smart access memory plays a major role here. But that's not all. Somehow, both the 6600 XT and 6700 XT have the same performance at 1080p, with the 6700 XT being only a bit faster while using SAM. Which is... odd, at least. At 1440p, the differences in between the 6600 XT and the 6700 XT start getting bigger, and it is only at 4K that we have a palpable difference in terms of performance, with the 6700 XT being 16 average FPS faster than the 6600 XT, which at 4K is quite a lot. Overall, all cards perform exceptionally well in this game, even at 4K max settings. Let's wait for Forza Horizon 5 and see how it performs. Let's go to the conclusion now. So, concluding guys, what do you think about the results? Well, we all know that the MSRP prices mean shit nowadays. So, you have an MSRP price, but the price will be completely inflated to heaven, okay? Yeah, boy! And that's not even the worst, because MSRP prices uh, are already higher than they should ever be. For, for example, the 6600 XT should have an MSRP at max, like $300, $350, and we have $400, almost $400, so that's a lot. And even if you could get one at MSRP prices, it would be already good, taking in consideration the current market situation. Uh, so, for example, an RTX 3060 will cost you at least like 550 euros or maybe even more if it is in dollars let's say 600 dollars or more while you can get the 6600 xt a bit cheaper and in some situations it is faster i mean in some almost all if you use smart access memory and a bit of tweaking okay but yeah and basically as for the 6700 xt in some european countries like portugal for example you can get some of them for let's say let's say 700 euros, 600 and a few euros, so if you can get one of those for 600 and a bit, the 6700 XT, it is way better than buying, for example, the 6600 XT for, let's say, 450, something that you can find in Portugal also, okay? So, uh, if you can, the 6700 XT in most European countries is the way to go in terms of price performance, and if you get the 6800, let's say, below 800 euros, I know it's crazy, it's a massive good deal because the 6800 is a massive upgrade compared to the 6700 XT and even more the 6600 XT if you're playing above 1080p. If you're playing at 1080p, most games will be completely fine with the 6600 XT and even at 1440p, the 6600 XT and the 6700 XT will suffice. At 4K, the 6700 XT will suffer a bit, but it wasn't a card made for 4K. But the 6800 is a masterpiece. If it was at the MSRP prices, it would be crazy good. And well, guys, that's all for today's video. Sorry for this shitty conclusion and shitty opinions, but I mean, I'm really tired. I had like two hours leg like day, so in the gym, two hours leg like day, then I just came home, then I had to go to my grand grandmother. Uh, so yeah, I was running, pff, running after running, in the car but running so yeah basically pretty busy and now i'm just recording this it's late night i'm recording this i'm tired but well sorry for anything and thank you a lot for watching don't forget to like subscribe and share this video because that really means a lot to me as always leave your comment in the comment section let me know what you think about this video and the results and well see you in the next one that's all i can say for now